Good evening and welcome to worship this evening. So glad that you could join us and be with us today. A couple of quick announcements for you. We hope that you'll join us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for worship. We are going to have in-home communion this Sunday, so we encourage you to go ahead and get that communion ready to go at home to distribute amongst your family uh, for worship next Sunday. Also, um, we've been able to add the ability for you to support Trinity's ministry right through the website. So if you go to www.trinityboyceville.com, right on the front page, you'll find, um, if you scroll down just a little bit, you will see an area where you can give a financial gift to Trinity. We, again, are so thankful for your financial support of Trinity's ministry, even in these different times. Also, be looking out for the next week. Be checking that Facebook page and your email for updates about some uh, content that's going to come out, some stuff for kids, some um, other opportunities. And so please uh, keep checking all that out. If you are not getting Trinity um, emails, please shoot me an email um, at pastorpb at cltcomm.net, and I'll make sure that you are on the list. You can find your worship bulletin on that Trinity website, um, or um, it was posted earlier today as a link on um, our Facebook page. So we invite you to turn to that as we begin our worship with Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Do not be afraid. 
I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. Indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord, and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You know, I think probably the most common question asked right now when you talk to somebody, whether you call them on the phone, whether you do a Zoom call with them, or maybe if you see them um, in a store or at the gas station, you're keeping your social distance, might be, when do you think this will all be over? You might also be thinking to yourself, what are the things you're going to do, the first things you're going to do when you can do them again? Will you run to your favorite restaurant? Will you be like me and run to the golf course and play golf instead of working every day, which most of you think I do anyways during this time? Maybe it's going to see your grandchildren that you haven't seen or seeing friends and being able to be in the same room with them and not have to social distance apart. But the interesting thing is the way we ask that question. When do you think this will be over? In other words, there is a sense that at some point, this will be over. Now imagine, though, if you were in exile. You've been in exile for years and years and years, for almost a whole generation. And you might think to your, start asking yourself, when are we going to be restored? That's what's happening in the prophet Jeremiah. The people have been in exile in Babylon, and the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah to give to the people a sense of hope that they'll be restored, that they'll plant vineyards again, enjoy the fruit, that they'll have tambourines, dancing, and merrymaking, that they'll be able to worship the Lord again in Zion, in Jerusalem, in the holy city, in the temple again. I know I am looking forward to having all of you here and being able to worship again and give praise and thanks to the Lord. But we're also in that point that not only are we asking the question, when will this be over, but we're also starting to get frustrated. Maybe we've had enough of family time. Maybe we've had enough of doing puzzles and cleaning out our closets and organizing our garages. Maybe we're starting to get a little bored and stir crazy. But also, it just seems like this has gone on forever when it's still not even, it's literally been about a month today. Our last service together was basically a month ago today. Seems like a long time. But we know that we will be restored. We know that we will come back together again. And so like those exiled Hebrews in Babylon, we cling to these words of hope that we will be restored and renewed and together again. But we also take hope in knowing that we are restored in relationship with our God through our Savior Jesus Christ, who rises from the grave to give us new life, who restores us in relationship through his death and resurrection, that because Jesus has been risen Forgiveness is for us. Sin is defeated. Death has no power. And that we are sustained in our weariness. That God is faithful to us, even in the midst of this uncertainty, even in the midst of so many questions, of so much anxiety. God is right there in the midst, and Jesus rose so that we might be given new life, so that we might be restored, and so that we might never lose hope. That even when we feel like we're in exile, we always have a home, we always have a place, we always have a Savior who loves us and is there for us and is with us and with you. Maybe I invite you 
that besides discussing when we think this might all be over, is maybe thinking of the ways in which the Lord has been active in your life during this time. Those moments when the Lord has given you hope and strength. The moments when the Lord has reminded you that though it seems so lonely, that you're not really alone. Those moments of love and kindness and joy that come even in the most difficult of times. Because the Lord renews us. Christ restores us. And we have salvation and new life and hope always. We're not sure when this is going to end. But it will end. And just as the Lord was with us prior to all this, and just as the Lord is with us now, the Lord is with you and will be with you going forward, reminding us and reminding you that you have eternal life, that you are saved, that you are free, and that you always have hope. For that we can say, thanks be to God. Amen. We are church together, and so let us together confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Loving and gracious God, in you there is restoration. In you, through the work of your Son, we are in right relationship with you. Remind us and be with us that we will be restored again. In the midst of despair and hopelessness, shower us with your grace, love, and mercy, and give us hope to trust in you and to know that we can get through anything that comes before us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving God, give healing to all who are hurting this day in body, mind, and spirit. We lift all those battling this virus. We lift up all, all those who are struggling to be separated from loved ones and those that they can't see. We ask you to be with all those who are dealing with job loss and economic anxiety. Lord, in the midst of all the difficulties in life, give, give us healing, hope, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, the sun shines this day. Shine your light on our hearts that we might trust in you. Remind us that the darkness cannot overcome it because you are walking with us. Help us to feel your presence in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, give strength to all our health care workers, all our essential workers, those who stock the shelves, the farmers who grow the food, and all those who are keeping us going in the midst of difficult times. Watch over them and keep them safe, and help us to be thankful for all those who do the little things that we so often take for granted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, be with those who keep the loss of loved ones. We ask that you would give them comfort, remind them, of the salvation that you have given us through the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. May your victory over sin and death give all of us hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Share that piece with you right now, or of course through the comments on the Facebook page. Also want to say thanks and peace to all those who stopped on Sunday for drive through communion. It was really great to see your faces um, and to be able to give you a sacrament. We will be doing that again 
And so just be, uh, uh, announcement will come out in advance before we do that again. But peace to all of you, and remember that, again, though we are separated physically, we are together connected by the Spirit of God in Jesus Christ. Let us, as that one community of faith, join together in the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We conclude with our closing hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. Take care.